When fans bump into their wrestling heroes outside the ring, they're usually super stoked and pumped. But every now and then, some folks get a bit carried away and forget to keep it chill, crossing a line and being disrespectful towards the wrestlers. So stick with us in this video as we go through WWE fans who disrespected wrestlers in public. Getting right into it with a moment from 2019 when a social media influencer took pictures of John Cena without his permission. Now everyone knows John Cena is as good as they come. He's like a good Samaritan who treats fans with respect and kindness. But sometimes he's had to deal with some not-so-nice fans in public. He's been a WWE mainstay since 2001, but around 2018 he took a more relaxed stance and started wrestling part-time. Cena headed out to California back in 1998, aiming to build some muscles as a bodybuilder. But by 1999, he shifted gears and jumped into the world of professional wrestling, debuting with Ultimate Pro Wrestling. Then, in 2001, he signed a deal with the World Wrestling Federation, which later became WWE in 2002. With a whopping 16 World Championship wins under his name, He's held the WWE Championship a record-breaking 13 times and won the World Heavyweight Championship three times during its 2002-2013 era. But there's more. He's also rocked the WWE United States Championship five times, claimed the WWE Tag Team Championship and the World Tag Team Championship twice each, won in the Royal Rumble twice, and scored a Money in the Bank win once. Now, while Cena's career has had its fair share of highs and lows, with some folks singing his praises for his character work and promo skills, others have thrown shade at what they see as his overexposure and on-screen dominance compared to his fellow wrestlers. But his generosity is undeniable. With over 650 wishes granted to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, he's earned a spot as one of the most respected celebrities for his benevolent spirit. But even the seemingly charming and unflappable John Cena had a moment when a fan pushed him too far in public. As much as wrestlers try to be nice to their fans, sometimes they just want to be left alone and they expect people to respect their wishes. But this influencer didn't get the memo. During a visit to London, a small-time YouTuber tested Cena's patience by basically his personal space, almost getting a rise out of the typically composed superstar. In 2019, a social media influencer known as Mo Dean happened to cross paths with John Cena in a store, and Mo Dean quickly whipped out his phone to film Cena without his permission. At first, Cena brushed off the encounter without reacting. However, when the fan persisted and approached Cena with his camera, Cena shut him down with a touch of sarcasm. Thank you for asking to take the video. At this point, Modine realized it wasn't appropriate to invade Cena's personal space with the camera, but he ignored and continued filming even after stepping away from John Cena. Even when Cena got ready to leave the store, Modine stopped him again with a weird statement. Take care, bro. I've got some advice for you, said the YouTuber. If it was any other wrestler than John Cena, Modine would have probably gotten an earful, but Cena stayed cool as usual. He flipped the script and told Mo Dean to show some respect. Despite all the crazy stuff Dean said, this one took the cake. He even had the nerve to offer Cena help. Contrary to what Dean thought, his videos got roasted by viewers, and let's face it, a lot of people thought Dean needed to get an attitude adjustment. And that's not the only time a fan seemed to need attitude adjustment. Although Chris Jericho might have gone too far when these rude fans heckled him, the Demo God has been in the pro wrestling scene for over 30 years now. He's been everywhere, working his magic in all the big leagues and snagging titles left and right. And we say everywhere. We're talking about all the major wrestling companies in the world. And if you're wondering about his wild ride through every major wrestling company in the world, here's a breakdown. In the 1990s, Jericho was everywhere tearing it up in American outfits like Extreme Championship Wrestling and World Championship Wrestling, while also making waves in Canada, Japan, and Mexico. Then, at the end of 1999, he burst onto the scene in the World Wrestling Federation. By 2001, he was making history as the first undisputed WWE Champion, winning up both the WWF and WCW titles in one swoop, by beating Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock in a single night. 
After he left the organization in 2018, Jericho made a splash in New Japan Pro Wrestling, nabbing the IWGP Intercontinental Championship once and becoming the first to hold both WWE and IWWGP Intercontinental titles. Then he jumped ship to AEW when it kicked off in January 2019, and he made history as the first ever AEW World Champion in August of the same year. Altogether, counting his time in ECW, WCW, WWE, NJPW, AEW, and ROH, Jericho racked up an impressive 35 championships, including eight world championships and 10 intercontinental championships. With everything he's done, it's no surprise that he has gathered fans along the way, both the normal and not-so-normal ones. In 2009, a bold fan really got under Jericho's skin, and let's just say she got more than she asked for. It all went down during Jericho's WWE days, as he was driving back from a house show in Victoria, BC, in his white Chevy Tahoe. He stopped at a red light, and a fan started heckling him. Things got pretty crazy when the fan's girlfriend joined in, and they both started laying into the former WWE star. Within minutes, over 50 people had gathered, completely blocking the intersection. When Chris Jericho decided to step out of his car, things quickly turned chaotic, turning into a full-on brawl. At first, Chris Jericho kept his cool, but when the 20-year-old female fan struck him and then spat on him, he reached his breaking point. The demo god retaliated by punching her back, causing her to fall to the ground. Eventually, security personnel intervened, but the demo god had bolted by then. Who could blame him? The police arrived and arrested the couple involved, but they were later released without facing any criminal charges. Sure, the couple went totally out of line, but it was a wonder why Chris Jericho snapped like that. It's not like it was his first run-in with rude fans either. Just check out this time. Chris Jericho had a little run-in with a fan in New York. The wrestling legend was just minding his own business in New York when he got into a bit of a tussle with a fan. It turns out he was leaving an event honoring his friend, the late musician David Z, who tragically passed away in a bus accident. After the tribute ceremony wrapped up, Jericho stepped outside and was swarmed by fans looking for pictures and autographs, normal stuff. He obliged a few, but then started turning people down. One fan took offense, and things escalated into a full-blown swearing match with F-bombs flying left and right. Luckily, it ended without any fists flying. After the whole situation, Chris Jericho later released a statement saying, David Z was like family to me, and saying goodbye to him that night hit me hard. I wasn't in the best headspace, and instead of brushing off a pushy, aka rude fan like I normally would, I snapped. My bad to everyone involved, and rest in peace, David Z. Lesson learned, don't mess with Chris Jericho, especially when he's feeling emotional. It's a shame, really, but wrestlers have to deal with crazy fans popping up everywhere. Just take a look at Rey Mysterio, who had to turn down signing his autograph, and for good reason, too. JWE superstars are always on the move for the company, and Rey Mysterio found he had to travel for a match. But while traveling through the airport, he was approached by a group of fans asking for autographs. But here's the thing. The amount of merchandise they had was way too much for just one person. It was pretty clear these fans were looking to profit off Mysterio's autographs by selling them as merchandise. But before we spill the tea, let's talk about why Rey Mysterio's autograph is such a moneymaker. Starting out in 1989 on the indie circuit at just 14 years old, Mysterio quickly made a name for himself. From there, he joined AAA in 1992 and had brief stints with ECW, WWA, and Wrestle Association R before landing a deal with WCW in 1996. After WCW folded in 2001, Mysterio continued his wrestling journey competing for various promotions such as Consejo Mundial de Lucha Libre, the World Wrestling Council, and the X-Wrestling Federation. However, his big break came when he joined WWE in 2002. When he arrived, he reintroduced his mask during matches. Mysterio remained with WWE until 2015, during which time he captured the WWE Cruiserweight title three times. 
After his whole stint ended in 2015, Mysterio took a wrestling tour to places like NJPW, Lucha Underground, and AAA. But guess who made a grand return to WWE in 2018? Yep, Mysterio, and this time he brought his son Dominic. With a career spanning multiple promotions and decades, you can see Mysterio's autograph holds serious value to fans and collectors alike. People would pay big bucks for his autograph. Even though some wrestlers aren't too keen on autograph sales, there are still folks out there making a killing off Mysterio's signature, and that's just what this guy wanted to do. Rey Mysterio was swarmed by fans all clamoring for autographs while he was clearly on his way to a WWE show. Hey, they don't let us do stuff like this anymore. I'm signing for you guys to make money. Let the fans come up and ask for an autograph, Mysterio explained. Thankfully, one of the men claimed to be a fan, saying he'd been a huge supporter since he was a kid, so Mysterio agreed to sign one for him. Sure, everything turned out cool, but this next moment could have been a real mess. This time, it wasn't some wild fan acting up. It was a host causing chaos right there on live TV. Grayson Waller and LA Knight were down in Australia to promote the Elimination Chamber gig. But then things got really spicy with the Sunrise Morning crew live on air. Before hitting the big leagues, Waller's journey was quite the ride. He grappled it out in the indie circuit as Matty Wahlberg before WWE came calling. His WWE debut? On June 11, 2021, he lit up 205 Live and took down Sunil Singh. Since stepping onto the main stage, Grayson Waller's been stealing the show, known for ruffling feathers and getting under his opponent's skin. He's cocky and arrogant, but that's just part of what makes him so interesting. That's why he seemed like the perfect candidate for the Elimination Chamber promo. However, things almost went south. During their promo on Sunrise TV, things got pretty interesting. Natalie Barr, one of the co-hosts, asked L.A. Knight if he could perform his signature move. L.A. Knight responded by saying that they just showed it on the screen and doing it again here wouldn't be good for anyone. Then, Matt Shervington, the other co-host, mentioned that the floor manager was leaving that week, so he volunteered to be on the receiving end of the move. L.A. Knight refused and offered Waller to take on the challenge by asking him. Waller didn't hold back one bit. He warned the floor manager, who was already puffing up, that if he came any closer, they'd need the cops, because Waller wasn't about to fake anything. He even told him, I'm going straight for your jaw. The floor manager continued to goad Waller, but the wrestler didn't find this funny. Waller stood up and called out the floor manager for disrespecting him, prompting the host to step in and defuse the situation. You want to act like this ain't real? Don't try to act tough? Waller fired back as the floor manager was pushed away. He even threatened to knock out the host if necessary. Some might say Waller went a bit overboard, but hey, you poke the bear, you get the claws, right? Now, Sasha Banks is usually cool as a cucumber, but even she has her limits, especially when fans push it too far. When Sasha Banks left the organization in 2022, a lot of fans were curious why she left and some couldn't keep their curiosity to themselves. Even though Sasha started off her wrestling journey back in 2010 on the indie scene, she didn't join the WWE until 2012. She left in 2022, but a whole lot happened in between. When she made her debut in WWE at NXT, she won the NXT Women's Championship. But it was her showdown with Bayley at NXT TakeOver, respect in October 2015 that really made history. It was the first ever women's match to headline a takeover event, the inaugural Iron Woman match in WWE history, and at 30 minutes long, it held the record for the longest women's match in WWE history at the time. Fast forward to 2020, she added another notch to her belt by winning the SmackDown Women's Championship at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, officially becoming a Women's Grand Slam champion and Triple Crown champion. Plus, she scored Wrestler of the Year by Sports Illustrated that same year. And let's not forget her historic moment at WrestleMania 37, where she and Bianca Belair made history as the first two black women to headline the event. 
So, after some creative drama in 2022, Sasha said goodbye to WGWE and ended up making her debut in NJPW stardom at Wrestle Kingdom 17 as Mercedes Monet. After she left the WWE, Sasha had a run-in with a fan who didn't quite grasp the concept of boundaries. Now, usually, Sasha's all about spreading love and interacting with her fans, and let's be real, her good looks only add to the charm, but she's not afraid to clap back if someone oversteps. During a meet and greet, a fan had the audacity to ask Sasha about her WWE departure based on what they read online. Sasha wasn't having any of it and quickly shut it down. She fired back, So that's what you read. You weren't there, so no. What's the real reason? Why would I tell you? You weren't at my interview. You're not reading my book. She made it clear that intrusive questions don't fly with her. It might seem tough, but hey, boundaries are boundaries. But a bunch of fans just don't get it. Like this one fan tried to get an autograph from Sasha Banks at the airport. Why is this such a big deal? Well, Sasha really doesn't like it when people bug her at the airport. She thinks it's super weird when fans know her travel plans or try to talk to her while she's just trying to catch a flight. According to her, growing up as a wrestling fan, she always dreamed of meeting her favorite wrestlers. But it never crossed her mind to stalk them at airports or hotels waiting for hours just to catch a glimpse. That, to her, crosses the line into stalking territory. She's cool with fans approaching her at arenas because she's already announced her whereabouts, but being ambushed at 4am in an airport by someone trying to profit off her autograph, not cool in her book. Back in 2017, a fan caught Sasha off guard at the airport, showing up in the middle of the night. She wasn't exactly thrilled, but hey, she still took the pick even if she didn't exactly flash a smile. Plus, she walked off immediately after taking the picture. Speaking of airport drama, we've got to mention the time a fan yelled at CM Punk in the airport. CM Punk went from wrestling underdog to top-tier celeb in record time. And ever since he hit the big leagues, he's been popping up everywhere. TV, red carpets, even comic cons. And when it comes to fans, Pink is really genuine and even takes time for everyone especially the young ones. But some fans just don't appreciate this, and CM Punk had a little airport altercation in St. Louis. Some not-so-friendly fan wanted an autograph, got turned down, and then another fan started causing a ruckus by yelling at Punk. Things got heated, and Punk ended up throwing the autograph book in the trash. Airport security had to get involved, and by then, Punk was seriously ticked off. He didn't waste any time addressing it on Twitter, though. His verdict? Unacceptable behavior. And he even retweeted a fan's message, apologizing to everyone for one person ruining the vibe. Up next, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins are two of the biggest talents in WWE, so they're used to fan love. However, in 2018, something happened that sparked a whole Twitter debate. These two decided to hit up a supermarket for some late-night shopping and ran into some fans. Seth Rollins refused to take some pictures with kid fans, while Roman straight up told them that he was not an animal in a cage and to stop taking pictures. Now, it didn't end here. A Twitter user named Veronica spilled the tea, claiming her dad bumped into Roman and Seth as well, and he said they were <laughs> But instead of her post blowing up as she hoped, it sparked a full-on wrestling fan debate. Some folks came to Veronica's defense, arguing that wrestlers have insanely busy schedules, traveling the globe, doing media stuff, and staying ripped, all while trying to have a life. They reckon if you want to hang with a superstar, hit up a meet and greet, don't crash their grocery run. And if a wrestler says no to a selfie, respect it. Don't go bashing them online. Preach. And Rollins once said in an interview, I'm not mean to fans because I'm a bad guy. I'm mean to them because they're rude. Similarly, this next fan didn't seem to realize he had pushed Randy Orton's boundaries. It's pretty common to spot wrestlers hitting the gym. They need to stay strong for all the action in the ring, right? But Randy Orton is about his personal space, especially during workouts. But this one fan didn't quite catch on and accidentally got under Orton's skin. Orton generally gets on with his fans. This dude comes from a family of wrestling legends with his grandfather Bob Orton, Father Bob Orton Jr. and Uncle Barry Orton all wrestlers. So he's had his fair share of fan encounters. 
However, he was gearing up for a WWE SmackDown event at Jonesboro, Arkansas, when a fan, Anthony Martin, approached him for a pick, but Orton politely declined. He told the guy he couldn't hear due to his headphones and gave him a thumbs up. All good, right? Well, not quite. Martin went ahead and took a picture anyway, and that's when things got heated. Orton stormed over, asking, What the are you doing? I said, no, pictures. Are you stupid? Martin was pretty shocked at the outburst and offered to delete the picture. Even though it seemed like Orton had overreacted, he was still firm in his stance. Randy even went on Twitter to address the issue, and it seemed he had some backup from former WWE and WCW superstar Lance Storm, who defended Orton, calling out the fans' behavior as ignorant gym etiquette and straight-up rude. Looks like even wrestling legends need their space, huh? Which of these fans do you find the most disrespectful? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section, and before you leave, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Ring Rivals so you don't miss the next ones.